Cormac McCarthy fans, we are here today to talk about Cormac McCarthy and alchemy. Ooh. And McCarthy was a huge fan and was directly inspired by the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, the Atlantean, which influenced him in the Sutri and Blood Meridian years. And McCarthy had just moved to El Paso and had a reawakening of his consciousness. He was in a new land, able to travel for the first time. He had just left his second wife. And with all these chains being broken, he broke a lot of the flat religious chains tying him down. Because I love when people type out their theories, excuse me, their Christian theories about Sutri and Blood Meridian and say, Ian, you can't understand such or blood meridian unless you parallel it with this aspect of the Bible. But at this time, McCarthy was in to alchemy, hermeticism, psychoanalytic thought, Freemasonry, hermeticism, obviously deep in science, Eastern mysticism, restudying religious experiences and the occult and psychedelics. And so I'm, I think that's definitive proof that McCarthy, who never, from what we know, attended church since he was in his early teenage years, was a Christian. And one could say that McCarthy was writing so great during the Sutri and Blood Meridian years because he tapped into the occult, to the non-hierarchical and consciousness-expanding systems of old. And it isn't a coincidence that all our heroes on this channel, all the greatest fiction writers and poets, in my opinion, of the last 100 years or so, we're not Christians, and of course, there are some exceptions in here. But once you break free of Christianity, there is no limits to your growth because that's what real writing is about. It's about going somewhere, whether it's outward or internally, and then using the writing skills you've developed, hopefully to a very high degree, to transmute that knowledge. And of course, there is deep Christian revelation. And you can achieve a lot of the same mystical heights within Christianity, but it is a lot harder to do with all of the constraints happening. So now that I've made a lot of you mad and shut off the show, let's talk about McCarthy's McCarthy and the Emerald Tablets of Toth. So while writing Sutri, McCarthy, in the margins of one of his drafts, quotes the most famous line from the Emerald Tablets, which, which is, as above, so it is below, or as above, so below. And this is one of the axiomatic notions of mysticism. And it connects to the idea of correspondence. And if you want a very deep analysis of the Hermetic tradition with, from a very famous book that reignited the, uh, excuse me, the Hermetic tradition in the 20th century, you should go read the Kybalion. I recommend this book for everybody. So level one of correspondence is just simple cause and effect. And within every cause, there is a dialect of possibilities. For instance, I could be in a very deep relationship with a girlfriend, but the deeper my love equals the, the amount of hate that I could feel toward her. Because if I love her with everything I have, if she cheats on me or does something crazy, then I will hate her with every being that I have or have the potential to do that. And so every effect in the world is tied to a duality. The second level is that the planes of consciousness whether they be the angelic realm or the more earth or hellish realm, the shadow, whatever we want to call them, are the same. Because as you've seen in, as we've seen in Christian theology, the angelic side is heavily emphasized. Even though we have Lucifer and stories of sin and all this stuff, it's the, the exploration of the shadow is never really mentioned. It's never really explored, and when it is, is it is very weak compared to the entirety of Eastern philosophy and its different sects, Hellenistic and Platonic philosophy, and obviously the pagan and occult religions that have been functioning for tens of thousands of years across the world. And so that's why it was such a big revelation to everyone, and that's what made Sigmund Freud and Jung a superstar when they came out to a Christian Western world and said there's such thing as a as an unconscious and a shadow. Th those concepts are new in the realm of psychology or Western philosophy. But for other cultures, they had been being explored for a long time. And they had been being explored in Christianity in very occulted ways, with fi figures such as the Fisher King and through fairy tales and whatever else was allowed. And then obviously through literature, art, and whatnot. 
We could also take it to very simple things like a tree, a big tree needs to have strong roots. The internal needs to be strong, strong, uh, as strong as the external. The internal creates the, in, uh, the external world as the external world creates the internal world. And they are inherently connected through correspondence. And once again, this may seem very simple, but what if we expanded this to thoughts? What if my thought, what if I, you know, I proclaim that thoughts and ideas have energy, that they enter and can change reality? What happens when thought becomes correspondences and enters into that, into that principle of duality? The whole game changes in terms of how you view reality, and we immediately escape any way to connect back to Christianity because we are, in that reality, influencing and controlling energy at a deeper level. And to kind of talk about it in like a Cormacian way, one of the big principles of Hermeticism is everything is bound. For instance, mathematics is a bound system, but if you change something in the formula, it changes the entire thing and it ripples out. We are bounded in our thoughts and our actions and our society tries to bound us literally in walls with systems and repetition and ideas, but we can escape that and expand if we start to change the internal. And this has always been viewed negatively by all different types of religion because when you do this enough, you realize that you are an independent player in the game. And when you start to connect deep enough and expand enough, you see the negativity, shame, and hate that these constrained systems of thinking put upon other people. So enough proselytizing about as above, so below. In Sutri, Sutri says this while he's at the cave. He says, as above, so so below in reference to the cave. And McCarthy probably came to this work, I mean, through a lot of different ways. It's honestly really Hermeticism and the Kybalion and all that stuff is anyone exploring the occult comes across this stuff pretty early. It's like kind of the foundations, foundational stuff. But Carl Jung, who we know McCarthy was reading at the time, and especially in his autobiography, Memory, Dreams, and Reflections, highly recommended for everyone out there, he talks about this book at length, uh, The Emerald Tablets. And in Suchery in Blood Meridian, we see the push toward the occult. The only time Suchery is in a church is if he's leaving the church or like having like a weird existential crisis. The only big church scenes in Blood Meridian, I was at one of them on the Blood Meridian tour, go join the Blood Meridian course inside the Cormac McCarthy course description down below, is when they are killing people in churches and like doing terrible things. There is no aspects of traditional Christianity unless you really force them upon the text. And the only time I really see that happening is like on Reddit and with people that really don't understand kind of what McCarthy was trying to do in a mystical way. Because as I'm about to talk about in my Cormac McCarthy, excuse me, blood, my Blood Meridian and Blood Meridian's epilogue video, McCarthy specifically states in one of his letters that Blood Meridian is not a historical novel. It's a spiritual novel. And I don't think the goal is to understand the Christian version of Lucifer. I think it is something, as we're about to discuss, much more in the realm of paganism and mysticism. And I actually recorded a whole podcast on Blood Meridian and alchemy with my boy AJP, but the sound cut out about five minutes in, so I'm going to have him on soon and re-record that episode because what we talked about was crazy. He was proving that McCarthy had read and was using very esoteric and not well-known aspects of alchemy within Blood Meridian. And I don't want to share in any of it right now because that's a lot of his own findings and theories, but we will have AJP on soon and do even a deeper deep dive into alchemy. This is just an intro from what is in the Sutri and Blood Meridian archives. 